Hey guys, so I want to do an example of a limit question that has an absolute value in it. So the example that I want to look at is the following. So the example I want to look at is the following. Let's say I want to evaluate the limit as x approaches 2 of the absolute value of x minus 2 over x minus 2. Okay, so we have this limit. So the first step in evaluating a limit like this is you try to plug in x equals 2. So we try to plug in x equals 2. So if we do that, if we try to plug in x equals 2, what we get is we get absolute value of 2 minus 2 on top. And on the bottom, we get 2 minus 2. So what this simplifies to is we got the absolute value of 0 on top, which is 0. And on bottom, we also have 0. Okay, so when we have a limit, and when we try to plug in the number, and we end up with 0 over 0, what that means is we have to try to simplify this expression first, and then plug in. But the issue here is, this is hard to simplify. And what makes it hard to simplify is this absolute value term. So this absolute value term is hard to simplify. Okay, so we want to try to simplify that. Okay, so what I'm going to say is when we look at, when we have the absolute value of something, so I'm going to call that stuff, when we have the absolute value of some stuff, there's sort of two possibilities. Either the stuff is positive or equal to zero, or it's negative. So either the stuff is positive or it's negative. So if the stuff is positive, we don't need the absolute values. We can just drop them. We can just write what we have on inside. So if the inside is positive, we can just drop the absolute value. So the way I'm going to write that is, I'm going to put if here, if this stuff, whoops. So if the stuff is greater than or equal to zero. So whenever the inside of the absolute value is positive, or if it's zero, I don't really need to put the absolute value bars, and I can just drop them, and I can just write what we have on the inside. The other situation is, if the stuff was negative, so now the situation I'm looking at is, if the stuff is negative, that means if this stuff is less than zero, then what happens is then the absolute value makes it positive. So if I have a negative number, one of the ways that I can make it positive is I can write another negative in front of the stuff. Because if the stuff is negative, and then I stick another negative in front of it, meaning if I multiply it by negative one, that now makes it positive. So I'm going to use this idea to write down what the absolute value of x minus 2 is going to be. Okay, so for the absolute value of x minus 2, there's two cases. So I have to write this as a piecewise function. Okay, so there's two cases. There's one case where the inside is positive, and if the inside is positive, I get to just drop the absolute value and write x minus 2. So this happens when the inside is positive. And the inside is positive if x is greater than or equal to 2. So one thing that I want to say about that is, I'm including the possibility here that the inside is zero. So if the inside is zero or positive, then we could just drop the absolute values. The other case is, whenever the inside is negative, I need to stick a negative sign in front of the whole inside, like we did with this absolute value of stuff here when the stuff was negative. Okay, so when the inside of this absolute value is negative, I stick a negative sign in front of the x minus 2. So that happens when the inside is negative. And the inside is negative if x is less than 2.
Okay, so we've written absolute value of x minus 2 as a piecewise function. So there's one piece where x is greater than or equal to 2, and there's one piece where x is less than 2. So now going back to our limit here, we want to find the limit as x approaches 2. Okay, so... So if I were to draw a number line, and if I were to draw 2 on the number line, we want to know what happens as x approaches 2. But depending on if x is bigger than 2, or if, so if x is bigger than 2, that's over here, or if x is less than 2, the absolute value term is different. So what we have to do is we have to take one-sided limits. So we have to take the one-sided limits to evaluate this. Okay, so when we take the one-sided limits, we have to take the limit. Actually, let me move that over a bit. So we have to take the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of absolute value of x minus 2 over x minus 2. And then we also got to take the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of absolute value of x minus 2 over x minus 2. Okay, so for the first one, when we take the limit as x approaches 2 from the right, so if I'm approaching 2 from the right and I look at the number line, this is the part as I'm approaching 2 from the right. So if we're approaching 2 from the right, so if we're approaching 2 from the right, this means that x is bigger than 2. And if x is bigger than 2, that means we're using the top piece. So we want to use the top piece of our piecewise function. Okay. So when we do that, when we use the top piece, we get the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. So when I use the top piece, I just replace this absolute value term with what we have on top. So I replace it with x minus 2. And the bottom stays the same as x minus 2. And now with this limit, we could cancel the x minus 2s. And that gives us the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. When After canceling, we're just left with 1. And now with this limit, there's no x's to plug into. So when we try to plug in, we just end up with 1. So this one-sided limit here, the limit as x approaches 2 from the right, is 1. Okay, so now we want to do the same thing with the limit as we approach 2 from the left. So as we approach 2 from the left, as we approach 2 from the left, that's here on the number line, we're approaching 2 from the left. So looking at our limit, as we approach 2 from the left, that means x is less than 2. And if x is less than 2, we want to use the bottom piece. We want to use the bottom piece of our piecewise function because the bottom piece is where x is less than 2. Okay, so when we do that, we get the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. And now when we use the bottom piece, we replace this absolute value with what the bottom piece is. So I replace it with negative and then parentheses x minus 2 and then divided by x minus 2. And now, again, this cancels a little bit. The x minus 2 in this parentheses cancels this x minus 2 on the bottom, and what we're left with is we get the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, and we're left with negative 1. So again, with this limit, there's no x's here. So when we try to plug 2 in, there's nothing to plug into. So we just end up with negative 1. Okay, so what we've just showed is the limit as x approaches 2 from the right is 1, and the limit as x approaches 2 from the left is negative 1. So remember, 
that for the overall limit to exist, for the limit as x approaches 2 overall to exist, these one-sided limits, the limit from the right and the limit from the left, they have to be the same. So since they're not the same, that means our limit does not exist. So let's write that down. So since, since the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of absolute value of x minus 2 divided by x minus 2, since the, that does not equal the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of absolute value of x minus 2 divided by x minus 2, so since those are not equal, this means this means that the limit as x approaches 2 overall, this is from both sides, of absolute value of x minus 2 divided by x minus 2, this limit does not exist. So this does not exist. Or we could write D and E for does not exist. Okay. So one thing that I want to point out about this is I want to look at, I want to ask a follow-up question. So the question is, I want to make sense of what we just got here based on what the graph of the function looks like. So the question that I want to ask next is, what does the graph, what does the graph of, I'll call the function g of x, what is the graph of g of x, which is absolute value of x minus 2 over x minus 2, what does that graph look like? Okay. So we want to look at that next. Okay. All right, so with absolute value of x minus 2 above here in our work, so we wrote absolute value of x minus 2 as this piecewise function. Okay, so for our function below, for g of x, I'm going to write that as a piecewise function as well. So I'm going to write g of x as a piecewise function as well. So it's going to have two pieces. So there's going to be one piece. There's going to be one, so the pieces are going to correspond to the pieces that we had here. There's the top piece where x was greater than or equal to 2, and there's this bottom piece where x is less than 2. So I'm going to start off with that same thing. So there's going to be one piece where x is greater than or equal to 2, and there's one piece, another piece, where x is less than 2. So I'm going to have those two pieces. One small thing, one small difference about this is that if we try to plug in x equals 2 into the function g, it makes the denominator 0. So that makes the expression undefined. So that means x equals 2 is not in the domain. So what I want to note, so I want to note that x equals 2 is not in the domain of g. It's not in the domain of g again because if I try to plug 2 into this function, it makes the denominator 0, which is bad. Okay, so what I have to change is, when I define this piecewise function, I don't want to have this top piece have this equals 2. So I'm going to get rid of that. I just got rid of that equals 2. So it's just going to say x is greater than 2 for that top piece. Okay, so when x was bigger than 2, That's the top piece for the absolute value term. The absolute value just becomes what we have inside, x minus 2. Okay, so if we write that here, if we write that here, the absolute value just becomes x minus 2, and the bottom is still x minus 2. In the bottom piece, if x is less than 2, if I go up to what the absolute value was, 
when x was less than 2 here, the absolute value became a negative and then quantity x minus 2 in parentheses. We're going to do the same thing for g of x. When x is less than 2, this absolute value becomes a negative and then parentheses x minus 2, close parentheses, and then we divide it by x minus 2. Okay, so that's how we write g of x as a piecewise function. But we notice that we could simplify both of these pieces. So if we simplify both of these, in the top piece, both of the x minus 2's cancel, and I just get 1. And we get that that was if x was greater than 2. And the bottom piece, the x minus 2's cancel, and I'm left with negative 1. And that was what we got if x was less than 2. Okay, so if we were to graph this function now, so if we were to draw a graph of this function, here's what it looks like. Okay, so I draw my axes, and then I'm going to put a tick mark where x equals 2 is. And then 1 and negative 1, they're y value. So I'll put a tick mark for y equals 1, and I'll put a tick mark for y equals negative 1. Okay. Okay, so for the top piece, the top piece says that when x is greater than 2, so when x is greater than 2, that's to the right of 2, y is 1. So the way we draw that is when we're to the right of 2, y is 1. So we draw a horizontal line. And we keep going until we reach x equals 2. But at x equals 2, because there's no equal sign here, that means x equals 2 is not included in this top piece. Because it's not included, the way we represent that is we draw an open circle there. Okay, so we'll get this line that looks like that. But there's an open circle here at this point. Okay, now drawing the other piece. For the other piece, y equals negative 1. And again, that's a horizontal line. But we only have that horizontal line for x being less than 2. So x being less than 2. That's going to look something like this. We have a line that goes through negative 1. But it, and it goes on forever this way. But at, when x equals 2, there's no equal sign here in this bottom piece. So that means x equals 2 is not included in this bottom piece, in this bottom line. Because of that, again, we draw an open circle. So that's what the graph of g of x looks like. This is what the graph of y, of y equals g of x. That's what it looks like. And now based off of this graph, if I were to say what is the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of g of x, what that's asking is as x gets closer and closer to 2 from the right, I want to know what the y values get close to. So the part of the graph that that corresponds to is So as x gets closer and closer to 2 from the right, that's corresponding to points on the graph like this. These points are getting closer and closer to 2 from the right. So if we look at those points right there, their y values are 1 for all of them. So the y values for those points are getting close to 1. So this limit is 1. The limit as x approaches 2 from the right of g of x is 1. Okay, so if we go back and look at what we were getting for the limit as x approaches 2 from the right, we got that the limit as x approaches 2 from the right was 1 over here. So we're getting the same thing now using the graph. So let's just check and make sure that the limit as x approaches 2 from the left is the same. So if I look at the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of g of x, and if we look at that on that graph, So as we approach 2 from the left, that's points on the graph like this. So these points are on the graph, and they're approaching 2, x equals 2 from the left. So for those points, the y values are all negative 1. So the y values are getting close to negative 1. So as x approaches 2 from the left, the y values approach negative 1. So this, left, so this limit from the left is negative 1. 
Okay. So if we go back and look at what we were getting for the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, we were getting that that limit was negative 1. So that's making sense based on what we now know the graph looks like. All right, cool. So finally, if we wanted to use this graph to say what the two-sided limit is overall, so what is the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x? Looking at the graph, as we approach 2, we got to look at what are the y values getting close to as we approach 2 from both sides, so as we approach 2 from the left, and as we approach 2 from the right. But the issue there is the y values are getting close to two different numbers, and that's bad. That means this limit does not exist. So this does not exist. I'm going to write D and E for does not exist. And it does not exist because the y values get close to more than one value. All right, so I'm going to stop there. But notice that what we got based on the graph for this limit as x approaches 2 does not exist. That's the same as what we got here when we did it algebraically. All right, I'm going to stop there.